Hey, hey, what's up, what's up, people? How are you doing? How has it been? I know I've been gone for a while, but now I'm getting back on track. I have been traveling, I have been busy coaching, I have been doing so many things, guys, and I'm also working on a book, so that is a good surprise. A Forex book and one for financial literacy. So lots of nice things coming up, but today we're going to be talking about something different. We're going to be talking about making money. Remember, all the time I talk about money, I talk about investing, I talk, I talk about saving, I talk about all these things. At the end of the day, you need to make money first. You first have to have the seed that you will be planting for you to get those returns we keep talking about, right? So in this video, we're just going to be talking about ways in which you can make money. My sweater is so bright somehow, but I don't know why. As long as you can see me and you can hear me clearly, we are good to go. Anyway, guys, so we're going to be talking about some of the ways, some of the side hustles that students or people in school or people who want to start a new side hustle could use to make money. And we're going to be using a resource that I was just reading a few days ago. And this is an amazing one because it's by a Kenyan, um, Rena Karina Hicks, it's called Moneywise. I love this book. The reason I'm promoting this book, I don't even know the person. I've seen her on YouTube and you know on TV. But I am thinking that we need to have more people who are teaching financial literacy and they have the context of Africa. Most people who talk about finances, talk about investing, saving, financial growth, and all these things are usually people in other countries. And uh, people who, are never, who have never been to Africa, they don't understand the context, they don't understand the culture. They don't understand where we're coming from. They don't understand our personal, individual circumstances and also our collective circumstances as a people. And sometimes you also need people who are local. If, for example, you're Kenyan, you want someone who's talking about finances in Kenya because that person is likely to talk about investment opportunities, business opportunities, money-making opportunities within the country that are applicable to you. And also, even if they're talking about global opportunities, then they will make them relatable and applicable to people in Kenya. And that's what I do as a finance coach. All I do is I have the knowledge, I have the global knowledge, the general knowledge, but I have to attune that knowledge to your personal circumstances. That's why I don't do groups, I don't do classes, I only do personal coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, whereby I'm looking at your individual circumstances and we tune our coaching to those circumstances. But for now, we're going to be using this book, which is called Moneywise by Rina Karina Hicks. I was reading recently an amazing book, by the way. If you can get it, please go and support a local author, you know, someone talking about this thing, someone we know. I am against the westernization of finances, the westernization of financial literacy. We have to localize financial literacy. We have to talk about things that local people can connect to. So, for instance, if you talk about saving, you want to talk about saving little money. You want to talk about people who earn 10,000 Kenya shillings. You want to talk about people who earn 20,000 Kenya shillings. You want to talk about people who earn 50,000 Kenya shillings. If you bring this abroad, sometimes it's not relatable to most people because they do not earn that low. But again, in our environment, this is possible and it's also possible to actually save and invest with that money because it depends again on the purchasing power of that money. What are some of the jobs that you could actually do while still in school? And this is a very important one. While still young and in school, so that you can start making money. Why is this very important? Because the earlier you begin the process of investing, the better for you. I always illustrate, time is the biggest asset towards your investing. Time is the biggest asset. So the earlier you can begin that process, the better for you. And this is gonna be applicable mainly to those who are still in school or those who are just starting life, you know. What are some of those things that you can do to start making money and start investing as soon as possible, even before you get a job or while you're still studying? A lot of students come to me and tell me, hey, Ken, I want to start afresh. I'm a student. I'm doing one, two, three. I want to start making money. Now, I'm talking to you today, and I'm going to take the content from this book, which you can actually buy. But I liked what she wrote because these are things I've spoken about on my channel. But I thought, why not go over them? Just the same way we review other content and other books. It's the same way we can promote someone who is from Kenya, one of our own. So making money while in school, this is the topic here. Most people who listen to us are young people who are still in school. And these are people who are trying to find ways of making money so they can start life. And nowadays, you don't have to wait for your certificate so that you can start. You need to start as soon as possible. That education will not miraculously give you money. That degree will not miraculously give you money. You have to start thinking ahead. You have to start thinking of opportunities that you can exploit so that you can make money. 
according to Rina Hicks, is entertain, entertaining people. Now, this could come in different forms, and I like this idea. I like this idea because I know there are so many people who have actually made it through entertainment. If you're a comedian, if you're a dancer, if you're a singer, if you're a poet, if you're someone who does dramas and stuff, if you can find ways in which you can entertain people while in school and make some money out of it, start that process. We know people like Jalango are now in parliament, started as entertainers. Jalango was just acting uh, set books. For those of you who did set books, Jalango was acting set books. Look at where he is now. And many other people that I saw actually act set books for us are now doing well even in comedy generally. So if you think you're an entertainer, look at the dancers. I've met so many friends who are dancers in different countries. Some are in the UK, some are in the US, some are going to Norway, some are in Egypt. And if you're watching Tony, so many people, they're out here, they're having fun, you know, while also entertaining people and making money out of it. These are young people from school. So this is something you can actually start doing as soon as possible so that you can make money from school. The second one, coaching in a sport. If you are a gifted person, you know how to play football, you know how to play rugby, you know how to play tennis, you know how to play. Find a way in which you can coach younger people or people who need those services and then they will pay you for it. You can volunteer in the beginning, like Rina says, volunteer first and then with time you can get to start properly coaching people and get paid for it. So coaching a sport is one of the ways you can start making money. And nowadays you even see lots of YouTube channels whereby people are just doing exercises. I'm a workout freak. I like working out, I like keeping healthy, I like keeping you know strong and active. So I look at channels that have like nice workout guidelines, you know, like right now I finished this video, I wanna work out. If you were to make just a five minutes video of doing push-ups, for example, you know, doing pull-ups, for example, that's how you start doing something, that's how you start making your money. That is an opportunity for someone to start making money even while in school. You don't need a certificate for that. You don't need anything. You just need your body, motivation, and discipline and start going. Then one of my favorite is cook. I do cook myself. So if you know you can cook, you can bake, you can do all these things, why not use that opportunity to start making money? There is no day the food business will go out of fashion. People are always eating. They always require food and therefore you will always be able to sell. You just need to know your market. You need to know where to source your stuff, make a good meal, and start selling it to people. It can be it cakes, be it mandazis, be it chapatis, be it whatever it is you think you're good at and you enjoy doing, start doing it and start making money out of it. Then tutoring. I like this one. Tutoring is a very common one right now, and you can do it online. Nowadays, you can even teach English to students in China, in Japan, in Korea. You can do this online. Tutoring can also be done to local schools. So you find ways in which you can tutor. Other people, some parents also require people who can tutor their children to pass certain exams. For example, in the UK right now, parents look for tutors to help their children pass GCSE or whichever exam they want to sit. In that case, you start making money while in school. Most of the time, they look for university students who can help their children pass these exams, and they pay really well. So tutoring is another opportunity that you can use while in school to start making money. Baking, I mentioned baking already cookies, cakes, whatever for friends, for parties. This is something I've actually done a video on. One of my clients has done baking and she's doing it on a proper scale. And she also teaches people now how to bake. So two streams of income from the same thing. So baking is something I mentioned under cooking. Research, this is something again Rina mentions. Research is something that most people are doing right now. I know people are also doing academic writing, but that is another topic altogether. Academic writing is a good one that students are now doing to make money, but research is different. There are so many data collection opportunities. When I was in campus, for example, we did research for NSSF. I think I did research for some other organization, I can't remember, but we always went collecting data, doing interviews, and uh, doing surveys and stuff like that. These are opportunities for you to start making money while you're in school, but you have to look for them. So data collection, doing some research, helping people are doing their PhD and their masters to get, collect data or, do whatever, um, or help them with anything that could facilitate their, their studies is something that most people look for. So if you can do some research, you are in for good bucks if you're still in school. And then make and pedal crafts. If you are inclined towards arts and crafts that you can make certain things like jewelry, paintings and stuff like that. Nowadays I see people going viral with amazing paintings. I see people going viral making an amazing uh, jewelry. Just recently I bought awesome jumpers when I was in Kenya from a very young lady who was just making them by herself. 
you can go this direction of making stuff, making art, making paintings, making dolls, making fabrics, making different items. They can be household items, they can be wall hangs, they can be whatever it is. They can be clothes. If you can make something that will pique people's interest, then you're in for good bucks. You can start making money as soon as possible. So yes, start making bucks by using your gifts in arts and crafts. Then I love this one, selling class notes. If you are someone who does not miss lectures, does not miss classes, you can always sell class notes. By the way, this was an idea that was, was pitched at Shark Tank. If you watched Shark Tank, somebody pitched an idea of how to take good notes and sell them to other students who do not want to attend class or who miss class for one reason or another. You can be taking notes and selling them to other students. A good way to start making money, right? An awesome way. By the way, there are people are making amazing money just selling class notes. That's it. So people look for weird ideas, but those weird ideas can actually make you crazy money. Selling class notes. So if you're someone who attends class all the time, then time for you to start thinking about selling class notes. Then, of course, retailing things. You can retail stuff. You can buy cheap things, be it clothes, be it uh, some food, be it whatever it is. Anything that you think you can buy cheaper somewhere else and sell to students or sell to people around you, start selling them. Start retailing. Start retail if there are things that people love, like, for example, people love hats, people love sunglasses, people love some kind of jewelry, then you can start doing that as soon as possible and you can make money. The other thing you can actually do, which I did, and Rina also speaks about, is barber and hairdressing services. If you know how to shave, if you know how to make hair, if you know how to plate, these are services you can always offer to students at a discount, and then you start making your money. So hairdressing and barber services, always needed. People will always need hairdressers. It doesn't matter. Even men nowadays have, you know, all types of hair, different types of hair. And you can help them, you know, make their hair, make them neat, make them shave, whatever it is. Help them achieve their goal in that sense, provide value to them and start making your money. And finally, being a chauffeur. So if someone knows how to drive, university students are always looking for chauffeurs. People are going to have fun. People are going for a road trip. People are going to do one, two, three. You can be the one who is chauffeuring people around and you making your money. And not only people in university, you'll find people outside asking you to take them to different places. I remember when I was in Kenya at some point, I got someone who was helping me move around Nairobi because I was so busy, someone was driving me. That's how hard, that's the service. You offer that service, flexible, and you get your money and you go home. These are some of the things you can do while still in school to start making money as soon as possible. And let me say this once again, the attitude of entitlement amongst people is not gonna help you build wealth. The earlier you begin, the better. Nurturing yourself to hard work, knowing that you have to nurture that habit of commitment, of discipline, of investing, will help you build wealth. These are some of the things that Rina talks about in her book, Money Wise, that you could actually start doing in university. Pick one, let me know in the comment section which one you think you can do, and if there's none, in here that you feel comfortable with, let me also know which one you think you'd actually do or which one are you doing currently. Again, it can help someone, can inspire somebody to start doing something interesting. So don't keep your ideas with you. Remember, there are like 7 billion people in the world. That idea can work for many people. It doesn't have to be one person. So never really be afraid of sharing your ideas. If you're making money and you think some other people can do it, why not share? You never know what happens, guys. So I hope that helps. This is an opportunity for you to start building some wealth. And if you're looking for a side hustle, again, those are side hustles. So see you guys and out.